Sheila Barbarino, and I'm oculoplastics as well as full body cosmetic surgery in Austin, Texas, and Los Angeles, California. Great. Next, Amy. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Lewis. I'm a cosmetic dermatologist in New York City. How many practices do you have, Amy? Oh, I have two practices in New York City, and I also teach cosmetic dermatology at Yale. Excellent. Jen? So I'm Dr. Jennifer Levine. I am a facial plastic surgeon, and I also do uh, full body procedures that are non-surgical, and I am on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. My neighbor. Yes, neighbors. Bridget? I am Bridget Williamson. I'm a physician assistant, and I own a medical aesthetics business in Indianapolis, Indiana, in the Midwest. You also see For better sure. that we've got one from each group. We've got an ocular plastic, a dermatologist, a plastic, and a PA, So, and from different parts of the country, which makes this group a really nice, balanced group and giving us perspectives on how they're going to reenter the market after COVID. Yeah, I love it. I appreciate everybody being with us, and, you know, this is uh, – this is what we can do during these times, right? We can talk to each other and talk among each other and try to figure this thing out one step at a time. And those that go a little bit ahead can help inform those of us that are, that are coming and trying to get back in there. So I think, you know, we're making, we're making the best of it all the way around, whether we're a company or whether we're a practice or whatever. So I think this is real helpful for our people to sit in and sort of be a part of this as we replay it. Uh, it's a first for us, Jeff, uh, a podcast where we actually uh, not live, you know, live and but on video and on Zoom, and so that's a pretty cool thing too. Yep, that's definitely different, but uh, probably the future as we move forward. Uh, this this format, we'll probably be using it for the next few months, so that's great. You know, we've been talking a little bit here amongst everybody about sort of the near term of reopening and what that could look like and what that could feel like. But if we step out of that for just a second, we can get way back into it later, but if we step out of that for just a second, what I'd, what I'd like to pose out of curiosity is understanding that any one of our crystal balls is as good as anybody else's right now. You know, we can't really predict too far into the future, but we've been talking about a new normal and we've been describing some elements of a new normal, but I wonder what your various perspectives are on is the new normal forever and, and sort of how long potentially before we drift back to something a little closer to old normal, you know, or do we stay in new normal? And th the way I try to think about this, I think about uh, the horrible thing that happened to us on 9-11, right? And no one could conceive of the new normal of flying prior to that happening. But once that happened, for a period of time, flying was awful, uh, but then certain elements came back into it, uh, global entry and TSA pre-check and things like this that made it get a little back closer back to the old normal. So just curious if each of you foresee elements like that somewhere downrange uh, or not. Can I take that one? Because there's something that's really interesting that you said a few minutes ago. You said post-COVID, when we go back to work post-COVID. And in my head, we're not going back to work post-COVID. We're going back to work post-COVID quarantine, right? Okay. But that's step one, because COVID's not over. It's, right? it's still there. This, mm -hmm. this is going to be step two of COVID. This is step two of COVID with no quarantine and not shelter at home as much. And so it's going to be a gradual letting out the first stage, second stage, third stage. And I think the first stage is we're going to start opening our businesses and there's going to be people that are gung ho that have been calling us and say, when are you open? I need my toxin. I need my fillers. And they're just either, they're just so interested in getting back to what they look like, or they have, you know, tons of money and they're losing the job or not losing the job is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And they just want it done now. And that's one group. And then you have the group that I kind of want to get back. I'm not really sure, you know, I'm, I'm inching outside, but there's people there and everyone's wearing masks and maybe it's a little scary. And I don't know, maybe are they doing everything I should, they should do to keep me safe. And then there's the patients that are just, there is no way I'm going anywhere for any period of time in the near future. So I think that we're going to see an onslaught in the beginning, a stimulus of the people like I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. They're banging down the doors. And then I think it's going to be a slow burn as people start getting out of their house and start getting back to their normal life. Mm -hmm. uh, which will be the first first normal. I think the normals are going to change as we go along. And I think there's something really interesting because we have this where we think people have lost their jobs and people, you know, they're a little skittish. 
But then let's look back to 9-11, like you said. Let's look back to 2008. And the opposite really happened, right? I mean, there was that lipstick effect where everybody <laughs> thought, you know, this is the time for me because life's too short. Who knows what's going to happen? And let me get done what I want to get done. And one quick story that I find really interesting is I was in New York City on 9-11. And obviously, the next day, I mean, it's closed down, right? And um, my friends in LA called me on 9 12 and said it was their biggest cosmetic day ever. So these people who felt like they were, they were okay, they were safe, but watched this happen, they were like, uh, you know, we're not taking it with us, let me do what I need to do for myself and make myself happy, right? Mm -hmm. Because obviously those people aren't happy. So anybody who starts feeling like, I've had it already, maybe I have antibodies, I'm good to go, they're gonna be out there and there, I think they're gonna start, you know, calling our office. I think Jennifer, do you think there's going to be less competitors in the market, Jennifer? Do you think like some people may not survive this or may not have a bricks and mortar, but will be injecting out of their homes, back alleys? Like, how are you perceiving this thing? <laughs> I hope not. Well, we hope not, but let's think about this, right? Let's, let's well, truly think about this because think, that is a yeah. possibility, right? I think that that may be less of a possibility as people look more to science and, you know, start to trust, you know, medical professionals more. Good. So I think that uh, safety is going to be a very important issue for most people and they will want to get their treatments done from a qualified professional. I think people are going to be a lot more careful. So I think that may actually help things. You can't uh, there's always going to be some people who want to do a back alley thing. I mean, there are people who injected like concrete into people's butts. I mean, there is always going to be people like that. But I think certainly uh, only businesses that had strong planning are going to survive something like this well. There's talk, you know, uh, there's you know, obviously all the businesses in New York are basically closed right now, but some businesses may not reopen. So I think certainly in order for your business to reopen, you it had to be somewhat robust. So there may be uh, less competition, but I think that eventually, especially when we get a vaccine, which will supposedly come, you know, in the next year to two years, we will eventually go back to something that is normal-ish. Is it going to be the same? No, it's not going to be the same, but we are going to live our lives again. You know, people are going to meet in groups. We are going to be able to hug and, uh, you know, congregate and, you know, and see each other. So I am hopeful about that, but we are going to have this, you know, weird period where we're not quite sure what, what's going on but you know 9-11 I had to actually fly because I was supposed to take my board exam and I had a review course in Chicago mm -hmm. and they ended up canceling my boards while I was at the review course so I actually flew less than a week after 9-11 I was on a plane so I kind of got over that quickly and I remember when I was flying back home from Chicago the pilot flew over New York City specifically and you could see the steaming pit of the twin towers you know and it looked like a cancer that attacked the city it was like this and i'll never forget it but we will get back <laughs> yeah i think the sooner <laughs> excuse me i think the sooner we all start doing you know our obviously safely and cautiously um what we used to do and, you know, even patients that are booking with me now, part of them are saying they're, you know, I want to get back to doing what I normally do. And that's seeing Dr. B. That's part of my, my monthly routine. And I'm missing that, you know, and then I look at my population, like um, here in Austin, Texas, um, as much as, you know, LA has money, Texas is really driven by the oil um, and tech industries and they've been hit really really hard what was it the other day it was more expensive to own oil than to um right i mean it, it's yeah, yeah, they, they, and to use like, it was like zero dollars yeah. a barrel right oh, they had to, like, I mean, pay to take it. these people are used to living large lives right i mean money is nothing right and um now you know all of their um everything has gone down to zero i mean I have staff that, you know, their retirement funds that they've been saving their whole lives were in stocks. And they're like, well, looks like I'm working for you for the rest of my life, <laughs> you know? And, you know, that's something that we have to be very sensitive to. 
um, you know, during these times. And like I said, even though it's affected both places very hard, um, one thing that I'm really seeing in Texas is everybody wants to kind of remember what their lives used to be like, even though they don't have the money and the funds that, that they could, you know, possibly used to do, you know, oh, I want the works, Dr. B, but, you know, maybe I'll just come in for a little ZMN, a little um, facial right now until we can, you know, get my finances back on track, you know? Yep. Makes sense. Um, Bridget, did you by any chance watch the interview that Steve and Bob Radigan had on yes. Facebook? Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts on what MERS is doing during this time and, and Bob's approach to how we're going to confront and supporting our customers, right? You know, I, I love MERS's approach and I've got obviously a few different accounts, but I have a very close relationship with my sales rep and with MERS, obviously I'm here. But um, MERS has taken a completely different approach than any of the other companies. And they've, they've reached out more like a family and more like a friend. And they've said, you know, we're not going to push anything on you. Right now is not the time to be selling you product because we know you're not selling products. We're an aesthetics company and you're not selling aesthetics right now because you're legally not allowed. So they just have said, you know, what can we do to help you? And I absolutely love it. And my relationship with my sales rep, our, we have talked just as much as we have before, maybe even a little bit more. But it's become more fun because she knows I'm a little bit bored or she knows, you know, I still like that relationship with her, but we're special. You know, we have a very special relationship. I'll tell you, I play favorites and she is my favorite, but, um, and I'm lucky I have Julie as my sales rep, but it's been a great time. I've had a great time with her. And, you know, I realize like maybe she's just as bored as I am, but she has actually treated me like I'm a really valuable customer. And that's special to me because she could be just as lazy as I've been during this like, you know, depressing board, what's going to happen with my business time, but she hasn't been, she's been reaching out, sending me funny things. She hasn't pressured me to try to sell her products like some of the other accounts have, which really I find a little bit insulting. You know, I, I know how to run my business. I don't want my skincare rep to tell me, why don't you sell it for 20% off and have people come pick it up at the door? I'm like, I know how to do that. Why are you telling me what to do? You know, I'll do it if I want to. But, um, you know, MERS's approach has been extremely unique and extremely different. It's the best approach I've seen. I, I think it's great. You know, as a company, it's been the best one I've seen. I don't know how you ladies feel, but I've loved yeah. it. How are you guys feeling about that? Well, I think it's, um, it's like a multifaceted approach. So it's really looking at the physician uh, kind of like holistically, like as a person, as a business owner, uh, as someone who has to see patients. Uh, so I think that's very important because it's kind of addressing all of the aspects that are really confronting us at this time, which is important because it's kind of, maybe we're better at compartmentalizing, you know, our different roles when we're not in a crisis, but for now it's good that we're having all those different areas addressed. I think that MERS Institute of Advanced Aesthetics is really helpful for, as Sheila was saying before, for our staff when they get back to work and there's really not a lot of work to do. I think that's a really good adjunct that they've allowed us to, everybody can use it now without having you know, any minimum orders or anything like that. So they've opened that up. And I think that's gonna be really critical. So people will, will you know, use the time for education. And um, otherwise you don't really want your staff just sitting around in the office doing nothing. I mean, if they have to work from home, that's something that they could be doing that's productive. The other thing about um, MERS that I really like is there, it's not just a, all, everyone is the same approach. Like if you're, you know, someone who's really good to MERS and you're, you're loyal to MERS, they'll, they'll call you and make a special, you know, call and say, listen, you know, we're, you're important to us. We've had a long, you know, relationship. Is there anything you really need that's not on that norm, on that regular list? Is there anything we can do to make your life easier? And I think as a family company, I think that that means a lot to us, that we're treated like family. We're treated like the extended family. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, different than most companies. Wow. By the way, Neo Cutis, which you know is one of my favorites, was also um, part of this thing about, can we help you? And as opposed to, there are people of us who don't have people in the office to mail out products or to make calls or even to email. So. What they've done is you can actually just have them call the office, give the order, and Neocutis will drop ship, free shipping straight to your patients, and still give you the same percentage that you would have gotten if you had bought it in the office. And I think that a lot of companies are cutting that percentage. You know, well, they're I need to open up an account. Yeah. Right? Yes, you do. 
What are you waiting for? I've been trying to get you to do this for how long? Maybe this is what you're waiting for. I need to get on that. Who do I talk to? (laughs) You know who you can talk to. We'll take care of that. Good. I'll sign up today. All right. All right. (laughs) Yeah, they've been really proactive. They sent an email. They'll extend all of your like Othera warranties out another six to 12 months, depending on when your warranty would expire. You know, they extended all the terms if you had, you know, terms on any of your bills due. Just nice stuff. They're not, they're not asking you to buy stuff. They're saying, if you already bought stuff, we're going to, don't worry about it. Don't worry. We already thought of all this. Like the experience program cards. I don't know if you guys have that. Yeah, They're like, oops. This. But look, this isn't a problem. Half your people call this. And I was like, I didn't even realize it was a problem, but I'm glad you guys addressed it. And if I need to worry about it, I'll check that email. I'm not going to read would, it now, but I'll check that if I need to. The, the reps to really come up with different packages that we can sell to patients versus having my, my staff right now spend time doing stuff like that. And, you know, again, with social media, you know, especially during this time, it's been the only real link that I've had with my patients other than calling them individually. Um, you know, I can get such a broad base just by sending out, you know, one post. It's, it's really phenomenal. I, you know, we've always known that social media was so much an important part of advertising and part of our business. But, you know, now with COVID, we know really it's been so impactful. I mean, I've never had uh, so many followers. I've never increased my following as much as I have during this short period of time. And I think that's because everyone's sitting around on social media. Yeah. I agree. I'm going to get a little personal now and uh, we'll start with Jennifer. I've obviously reached out to all of you during this time and we've had some laughs and we've had some uh, tears and we've also been able to comfort each other during this time, I think. And it's been kind of neat. And I think one thing that you've all shared is how this experience has changed you, right? Um, So my question for you is how has it changed you and how is it gonna change you moving forward with your business and your interaction with patients? And let's not talk about the technology side, let's talk more about your inner self, your emotional self. So I kind of feel like, I think there was that book like, everything I needed to know I learned in kindergarten. Yes. So it's a little bit like that. Like I was like all of these like lessons I kind of like learned as a child, like save more money than you spend, you know, <laughs> That's a good one. To, you know, one, one of the things that my father always taught me was that you should be respectful to everyone and everyone's job is important. So now we know like the people who check out our food at the supermarket or deliver our packages, like who's more important than them. So like, that's certainly uh, something that like I've been reminded of, like, you know, science, you know, follow data, science, you know, trust science, things like that, you know, I think are, are things that I'm just more mindful of. And then, you know, when I feel like I get like a little bit frustrated, in my yoga classes, we had a teacher who says like, do what you can, not what you can't. Like I focus on what I can do, like what I can accomplish and not, not what I can't. Like if I can't, you know, there's certain things I can't control. I can't make the vaccine faster. I can't make them open up New York City before they're ready to. So I kind of focus on like, what can I do now? And I'm focusing on what would I like my practice to look like? Yes. Things I love that I can do to, to make that dream happen now. Like, what are the things that I'm going to look back in and say, oh, if I, you know, if I always had the time, I would work on this. Well, now mm-hmm. is that time. And I'm setting the groundwork to make my dreams come true. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. I think we were on the call, Jennifer, and you actually said that you're thinking of hiring right yes. after that. Yes, yes, so yes. You're actually looking at this differently. You're asking, yes. how do I reposition myself and bring in more? I think that's great. Yes. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Bridget? How's this changed you and how are you going to do things differently? You know, I've I had a lot of downtime. I, I don't have a big staff like some of the other people, but um, I started talking to my friends, people I hadn't connected to in a long time. And I realized I'm going to take this opportunity just to really value the people that are more valuable. I think in the last year or so, while I was building my business, I was putting a lot of priority on people that weren't as important. You know, I was just trying to get numbers and building and building and building. And I wasn't like culturing the relationships that I really should have. And now mm-hmm. that everything's that I am booked, I don't need, you know, the important or I don't need the appointments that I thought I needed. I need to really focus on the relationships that are important and the things that bring me joy. You know, right now it's like, 
there's really good clients out there. And those are the ones I need to prioritize. I don't need to worry about putting every single person on my schedule. I need to make sure the good people are on the schedule and that they're treated really well. And the other ones like, it's okay to say no, you know, I actually mm-hmm. talked to my best friend from high school and, you know, I was not doing anything for a week. And I said, we should go on vacation this summer. And you know what she said? She goes, Oh, but you won't need to be too busy. And I was like, ouch you know the first thing that came to her mind was i bridget would say no like bridget doesn't do things and you know that hurt i just thought my best friend every time they want to go on a trip or something they say bridget will be too busy so we booked a trip you know i'll never do that again so now i'm just i've got a lot of trips booked i hope they don't get canceled but i've got a lot of trips booked and that's going to be my new thing moving forward it's like you know there's a lot of more important things in life than just working you know and there's really good clients out there i'm gonna take really good care of them You know, it's not about necessarily the numbers. It's about the people. And I'm going to really focus on taking really good care of really good people, including myself, you know, moving forward. Good. Amy, and there's a reason why I'm picking you last, Sheila, because it was a conversation we had. But Amy? So I think there's a lot of things. One is I think that we are going to have a better sense of who our friends are, both in this world, like you guys, you know, we've been connecting and helping each other through this. And I think that you really know who's there to help you and who really cares. And we've taken some of these discussions off of Zoom and just, you know, one-to-one and just say, hey, what do you need from me? Can I help you? And it's nice to see like who those people are that, you know, they may be your competition, they may be your colleague, your friend, but they're there for you. That's number one. Secondly, I think you find out who's there for you and your patients. And and in that, in that area, because I have patients that are calling my office and saying, you know, I know you're closed, but we'd like to support your business anyway. So, you know, I need some skincare products. Do you want to give me a regimen and I'll order from your office? Because I, you know, I want you guys to stay afloat. I want you, I want to do what I can so that you have a business to come back to when everything opens. And I thought that was like the sweetest thing that people want to go out there and, and make sure we're okay. So for me, that, that's, that was so heartwarming. And I, I think for me, it's going to be hard because I'm very expressive. (laughs) I think it's going to be hard to have a mask on and talk to my patients and convey what I want to convey to them. You know, I I have very expressive eyes and and with the goggles, I have to make sure they're clear because I want them to see what I'm feeling. And I think that to do that, I'm going to have to have more face time with my patient. So I'm going, I would like to have a longer appointment time, really connect with that patient, talk about what's going on, you know, in this, in their life right now and, and connect in that way because there's a barrier and that barrier, I have to get through that barrier because I want it to be like it, it was before and in my own life i've been cleaning out closets and doing some <laughs> yoga <laughs> and according to yoga you know it's the journey right it's not what you can do at each particular time it's a journey till we get to the end and it's not the end that counts it's how we how we treat people and how we live our lives during that journey that's great that's great and so you're kind of like reiterating what bridget said you want to make sure those patients who are with you as well that you're giving them the best quality yeah time and service to look great. Sheila. Jeff. You could answer that question, but I'm going to ask you a question to follow up to that one. But how are you different through this? What has changed and how are you going to treat your patients differently? 